In uncertain times, being prepared can make all the difference. Imagine if you woke up one day and you were told that you couldn't leave your house for 30 days. Well, that just happened a few years ago, didn't it? Hello everybody and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and we are all about pantry preparedness because your pantry is the best insurance that money can buy. Today we're going to talk about some must-have pantry items to have on hand just in case. Grains and starches. They're an important part of the diet. They should not be a majority of the diet. You do you boo, okay, but grains and starches. Number one, they're cheap. Uh, number two, they're carbs, so they're high energy. Um, number three, they really can stretch a meal faster than anything else you can come up with, right? Think about meatballs, meatloaf. Yeah, stretches it. So another thing to look at is that they have an amazing shelf stability. Uh, they will last on your shelf if properly stored for a very, very long time. So you want to take a look at things like rice. Um, I've got everything from minute rice. Yeah, that says minute rice. Okay. To regular white rice. Long grain rice will not last on your shelf for more than six months. Brown rice. Long grain brown rice. Six months. That's it. Sorry. Has a natural oil in it. So you want to be cognizant of that. The other one is pasta. It's been a while since I bought pasta. We don't go through a whole lot of it anymore, thank goodness, but it's there when we want it, when we need it, when Phil has a mac and cheese attack, right? So I always have pasta on the shelf. It'll throw together a quick meal and it will make you full. And that's a beautiful thing, okay? Oats are another thing. I have a whole bunch of oats here. I think I have to stock up more, but um, just regular rolled oats. They're good for you. You can do so much with them. Aside from being the breakfast of champions, right? Uh, on a cold winter day, there's nothing like a bowl of oatmeal made your favorite way. What's your favorite way? I never could understand the butter and the milk thing, but I love it with apples. Yeah, really, really good with apples. However, uh, you can also make cookies with it. You can also use it to extend your meat, you know, your ground beef and stuff. Oats have a lot of use for them. And again, shelf stable. The other one is flour. Now, as most of you know, I prefer to store for long-term storage um, actual wheat, and then I grind it myself. Uh, commercially ground flour will last you maximum two years. I mean, that's like pushing it, okay? However, on the shelf, it'll last you anywhere between a year and two, depending on how you talk, who you talk to and how warm your pantry is and, you know, whether the moon is aligning with Venus that month. I don't know, but I normally bank on about a year. And so for that reason, I don't stock a lot of commercially ground flour. However, you can for decades store wheat and then you can grind it at your discretion and it's better for you, a lot better for you, but I get it. So it's essential though for baking breads. You can make your own pastas. You can do your own pancake mix and waffle mix, you know, that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with flour. So those are some things, grains and starches, that you want to make sure that you've got on your shelves. Protein is the next category. So beans is a very simple shelf stable method to be able to have protein uh, available all the time. Okay. So definitely check out beans. There's a lot of different beans out there. Keep trying them. Do different things to them. You guys like uh, my Spanish, my Spanish beans, right? Spanish pinto beans. Those are so good. And it's not something you would typically find in the store. And they go with all kinds of different meals. And you can use them just as they are heated up. Or you can mash them up and make them into a really flavorful kind of refried bean, you know. Black beans are great in soups and they're great in salads and they're great just on your plate. And, you know, you have to find the beans that you like. Not everybody's going to like all of them. Trust me, I'd rather eat my toe than lima beans, but uh, Phil loves lima beans. So I have a stock of lima beans also. So proteins on the shelf are fantastic. Um, another thing to consider is nut butters. Now those have a not long, long, long shelf life. Okay. So uh, they're good for about a year or so on your shelf and then they'll start to separate and then you just have to beat them up and they're good. Okay. But I wouldn't buy like, you know, 40 jars of Jif unless you have 10 kids. So 
do what's best for you, but nut butters are fantastic. You can also um, get the powdered uh, peanut butter also. So they have it at Walmart. They have it on Amazon. They have it in a number of different places. And we have really, really come to enjoy it. Uh, Phil puts it in his protein shake in the morning. I use it in breads and different things, you know, baking. Uh, I even got my grandson hooked. It's a great thing. And then nuts and seeds, not shelf stable. Nuts and seeds are something that you want to keep in your freezer if it's long, long term. Okay. Uh, if it's anything more than six months, basically, you want to keep them in the freezer. That's the way to make sure that they last the absolute longest. Somebody's going to go, I've had pecans on my shelf for three years and they still taste good. Okay. Yeah. No, no. You need to get your taste checked. Okay. Because they go rancid. They have a natural oil in them and they go rancid and oh my gosh, that taste is off. What does it taste like? It's off. It's just not right. And when you taste it, you'll know. And when you put it into your brownies, you'll go, whoa, that doesn't taste right. Okay. So those need to be put into the freezer. Almonds, walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, you know, they're all nutritious and they all are great additions to meals, um, to different breads or, you know, puddings or anything like that. So um, these are all great proteins to give some consideration to when you are building up your pantry. If you eat them today, if you have allergies, don't stock them. Next category is canned goods. Wah! Okay. Um, and not necessarily all home canned. Yeah, it's good. It's great. You know, can everybody do it? No, everybody can't do it. So the idea is canned goods. So you want to look at canned vegetables. I mean, your green beans, your corn, your peas, a variety of whatever you eat. Keep them on the shelves. Your spinach, you know. I find it much more economical to buy commercially canned spinach than to do it myself. It's a lot of work for a little bit of reward. But if you do can it, whew, hats off to you. Um, but seriously, all the canned goods, okay? All your vegetables, no matter what they are, as long as you eat them. Do a basic, there's 52 weeks in a year, so figure at least... 52 weeks you're going to be going through. Well, you know, at the end of the day, to get through an entire year, you're going to need a can of vegetables a day. 365. A can of vegetables a day. On the leap year, take the day off, okay? Have something. That's the easiest way to figure out. And then how many vegetables do you use? That's, see, that's, that's where the fun comes in, okay? That's where the fun comes in because you go, okay, I like beets and green beans and corn and carrots and this and that and that okay so say you come up with 14 different vegetables you know that you're going to need at least 26 cans of each vegetable so that you have a vegetable every single day of the year right yeah that's it i mean a week's worth of vegetables is seven cans of vegetables now again i'm talking about like one or two people okay so if you have a larger group then do the math for that but that's exactly how easy it is to break it down. 365 days out of the year, 52 weeks out of the year, seven days in a week. Go from there. Canned fruits. Canned fruits are mm, 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 mm. Look for options packed in water or juice for a healthy, sweet treat. See, to me, fruit is kind of like a dessert. Um, so, you know, it's a good thing to have around. It's a good thing to take care of that sweet tooth if you get it. There are all kinds of ways to look at it. Figure out how much fruit you eat a year and then, or a, a week, not a year, a week, and then break it down from there. Okay. Then how much would you need for a week? How much would you need for three weeks? How much would you need for three months? How much would you need for six months and a year? Um, and move it around. Okay. What different fruits do you like? What do you only eat seasonally? Um, I only eat pomegranates like once or twice a year. I only eat watermelon in the summer once, you know, so it's taking a look at what you do. How often do you eat pineapple? I've actually trained myself to not eat it, but, um, it's, you know, on ham, uh, during the holidays, you know, that kind of thing. So bananas, most people eat bananas, apples, grapes, that kind of thing. Figure out, you know, what you can do and how you can put it up so that it best works for you. There's freeze dried, there's dehydrated, and there are canned. So your canned goods are a great option. The next one is canned meat. Ugly chicken for the win, my friends. Okay, so look at your canned meat, whether it's commercially, which you're going to pay more, 
or whether it's home canned, which is just amazing. And if you do it right, is the best bargain. So canned meats will see you through a very long time. Commercially canned meats typically have a shelf life on them of like three or four years, which is amazing. Um, and your home canned stuff, that's literally good for a decade. Do you put it on the shelf and let it sit there? No, you rotate through it. Stop wasting money. So the next one is, of course, the beans. Yes, the canned beans. Now, you have dry beans. Why do you want to can them? What a waste of time. Ugh. Okay, no, it's not a waste of time. It's actually saving me time in the future because not everybody has all the time in the world and because I would rather have my home canned beans than I would ones that I get at the store. Now, obviously, the lima beans are a completely different story, but um, black beans, pinto beans, that kind of thing, you know, cannelloli beans, I'd rather can them myself. I know what's in them. I'm good. I will make an incredible hummus, you know. Just can the beans. Don't listen to everybody else's nonsense. The next thing to consider are your cooking essentials. What is essential for you when it comes to cooking? So what cooking oils do you use? I always have a plethora of olive oil in the house because that's primarily the oil that I use. Um, coconut oil, vegetable oil, whatever it is that you use, okay? You wanna make sure, but understand that they recommend uh, that it does not last much longer than six months. Now, again, take it with a grain of salt. I have had olive oil last perfectly well uh, for over a year. So play it by ear. Don't buy a ton of it unless you use a ton of it, okay? We don't fry anything here, so I never have to have a whole bunch of anything, you know, built up for that. And I know coconut oil, a lot of people go with that, but olive oil is my oil of choice and uh, avocado oil is my second. So they, they don't have a super long shelf life, but long enough to see me through some difficult times, right? Then there's also lard and tallow um, that are options, but neither one of those are really shelf stable for the long term. Uh, I'm more familiar with lard, obviously I raise pigs. Uh, so I have an entire drawer in my freezer that is devoted towards holding the lard that I've rendered. Uh, keep it in the freezer. Crisco, I think will last forever, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. What is lard? It's kind of like the real version of Crisco. What is tallow? It's the beef version of lard. So cooking oils, they're really important. Um, spices and seasonings. Okay. Cause they make life better. I mean, a lot better, a lot, lot better. Um, I vacuum seal them in the jars. You want to make sure they're airtight. If you have a lot, lot, you can put them in mylar uh, with an oxygen absorbable. They'll, they'll last a long time, a really long time. I've had cumin for a couple of years now. So, uh, you know, as long as they're airtight and away from light and heat and moisture, they'll last you a good long time. So spices and seasonings. Remember salt. I literally buy salt 50 pounds at a time. How often? About once every oh, five plus years. Okay. I mean, you know, I don't, we don't use a lot of salt. Uh, primarily when I'm using salt, it's with baking that I do. Uh, and that doesn't often stay in the house. Um, have different kinds of salt, depending on how you use it. I've got regular iodinized salt. I've got uh, canning salt. I've got kosher salt. I've got sea salt. I have black pepper. I have rainbow pepper. I have, you know, whatever. So whatever you use, stock up on it. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to be redundant as far as the types. Is there a huge flavor difference between the rainbow pepper and the black pepper? No, but one's pretty. <laughs> okay. Anyway, vinegar. Vinegar will last a very, very, very long time. Um, I do recommend that you pay attention to the percentage on it. You want 5%. You do not want 10%, people. You don't even want 6%. 5%, okay? Um, apple cider vinegar and white vinegar are great for cooking. They're great for preserving, and uh, they're great for cleaning. So you want to make sure that you've got those around. Now, the other reason I'm sitting in front of this shelf right here is because we're talking about baking supplies. Um, so your yeast, uh, essential for making breads and other baked goods, you know, of course, unless you're the sourdough queen, um, then, you know, you don't need it. But yeast is good to have. Um, sugar and honey, both of those, if stored properly, will last 
a lifetime, literally a lifetime. So stock it up. I mean, I buy at least a quart of local honey every single year. I think I'm just now emptying a jar from four years ago. We don't use a lot of it, you know, it lasts a good long time. So I know the price is kind of, oh, uh, you know, but good local honey, real honey, not necessarily your little brown bear dude in the store. And then just plain white sugar, just store it properly and you're good to go. The other one is baking powder and baking soda. Um, those have a finite shelf life while well, baking soda does not. Baking soda will last quite a while. Baking powder has a finite shelf life. Um, so you want to look at how much you actually use and don't go crazy stocking it up. I mean, I, I got, you know, I, I got a jar of it and it lasts me well over a year. So at some point or another, it will stop being effective. And somebody I'm sure will throw out in the comments section down below on how to make your own either baking powder or baking soda. I don't remember something about putting it in the oven. I don't remember because I can buy it cheaper than I can waste the time. So baking supplies. Okay. The next one is, <laughs> the next one is, um, snacks and treats. I know snacks and treats. Now, if you're going to go for long-term, here's what you want to do. <laughs> go as natural as you can. So they talk about crackers and rice cakes. Yeah, who doesn't love to have some oyster crackers with their soup or, you know, maybe a little bit of peanut butter on a, a saltine cracker or some cheese and meat on a Ritz cracker or whatever. That's great, but those don't have a long shelf life. Uh, you will find stuff all over the internet with people telling you, oh yeah, just vacuum seal them in a half gallon jar and they're good for years. Mm, no, they're not because I believe those, I tried it. And it's, uh, when you open the jar, you get the distinct odor of paint thinner, okay? They go rancid. It's just the nature of the beast. If you want long-term, learn how to make them. It'll do you much, much better. But for short-term, they're great to have. They're convenient and they're comforting, you know? So crackers, uh, rice cakes if you do them, dried fruits. Those, those are the good snacks to have, right? So your cranberries, your dates, your raisins, your golden raisins, your uh, cherries, your, you know, all of the dried fruit, apricots, figs, whatever. Um, those are fantastic to have. Not only are they great in baked goods, you know, but they're really good for just snacking on. Check those out. You do not have to vacuum seal them. You just put them in an airtight container. They have too much moisture naturally still in them to vacuum seal safely. So don't vacuum seal them. Okay. The next one is chocolate because it's chocolate, hello. Let's talk a little bit about dairy and dairy alternatives, okay? Powdered milk is an excellent substitute. I was doing something yesterday and I went into the fridge to grab some of Phil's milk and I went, there's no milk in here and he didn't tell me that he was out. So I had to go digging and found myself some powdered milk and I used that to make what I was making. It's there, it's always there, it's available and it's easy and it's shelf stable and life is good. Um, I think the average is about 10 years it's good if you vacuum seal it, keep it in a nice, dark, cool, dry place, you know, and then, yeah, it's good for 10 years. So definitely look at powdered milks. Uh, it's not, you know, all brands are not created equal. Um, there are some that are better than others. Personally, hey guys, Thrive Life has it on sale for 50% off right now. It is an amazing dried milk. It is so good. Um, I've also heard of uh, Nido being very good. I have not tried it. I'm not a milk drinker. Um, and then, you know, basically whatever you can get your hands on. But low fat, no fat is the best. High fat does not last long on the shelf. The next one is shelf stable, almond milk or soy milk. Uh, you're seeing a lot more of these and what's, it starts with a G or something like that. Anyway, you can normally find them like even at the Dollar Tree and they hand them out quite often at the different food banks. So take a look at those. I hear they're just as good. My grandson did a taste test for me and he said it was just tasted like milk, grandma. Okay, great. So, you know, it's a great thing to have on the shelf for an emergency. Again, it is not a set it and forget it. Those are typically good for about a year on your shelf. The other one is cheese, because cheese is life. It is the culinary glue, okay? Cheese means everything. So make sure you're stocked up on cheese, not to the not to the effect that you won't use it and it'll go bad. Um, honestly, the more that you are at the original state of the cheese, the longer it will last. 
most of your shredded cheeses that come pre-shredded in a bag, I know they've got some kind of uh, coating on them. I, honestly, I believe it's cornstarch. But anyway, um, to keep them from clumping. But even then, you know, even then, they will start clumping and they will start turning green after a time. But I have a brick of cheddar cheese in my refrigerator drawer. It's not frozen. It's the refrigerator drawer. It's been there for six months. It has not changed colors. It has not done anything. I keep it airtight. When I need it, I go whack off a piece and I vacuum seal it again. And yeah, it will last a good long time if it is as natural as you can be for cheese, okay? Shred yourself. It's a pain in the hoozy what's it's and nobody knows that better than I do, okay? But, mm, you know, it will last longer. As far as uh, American cheese, that's that's kind of like Velveeta, okay? It'll last a long time. And for shelf-stable cheese, Velveeta or the store brands, they'll last over a year on your shelf, my friends. Yes, they will. How do I know this? Because Phil likes his macaroni and cheese with that. So that's what I do. The next one is beverages. Now, this is something we don't kid around about here. Coffee. Coffee is important. Coffee does have a shelf life, even though I have been known to drink it a few years past its shelf life and it was just fine. Um, but, you know, stock up on your favorite coffee. Just get enough to get you through 30 days. That's all we're talking about here. So coffee and tea, they'll, you know, they're essential for keeping spirits up. Yes, they are. And providing a sense of normalcy. They also make you warm when it's cold outside. Um, Shelf-stable juices. You can can juices your own so that it's just that fruit juice in there. Um, and it's really good. There's all kinds of shelf stable juices and electrolyte drinks. I prefer stocking the powder or making your own as opposed to buying like Gatorade, you know, um, but some kind of electrolyte drink because it's easy to lose those electrolyte electrolytes, even when, you know, especially when it's warm out. Um, so you want to make sure that you have what you need to make sure that you're staying balanced and everything's working the way that it is. There are comfort foods and then there are comfort foods um my comfort foods are foods that i make myself that are homemade that are just soul warming that bring back good memories or you know fill you up or just make you feel good on a really cruddy day you know um but there are some emergency comfort foods so instant noodles uh quick easy comforting during stressful times uh, canned soups and stews. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to can it all yourself, but I mean, honestly, I beg anybody to make a better split pea soup than I do. Okay. So I've got them on the shelf. Split pea soups. You can do it yourself. You can buy it. Um, instant mashed potatoes or instant any potatoes. Yeah, I get it, but they're simple and they're satisfying as a side dish. And during a really bad emotional time, they could be an entire evening instead of a bottle of wine. You know what I mean? You also want to look at longer lasting fresh produce. Okay. So onions and garlic are two things that last a really long time. Definitely um, adds flavor to many dishes, stores well for weeks if you like them fresh. I also keep it freeze dried and dehydrated. I have many varieties of uh, onion and garlic put up because it's a must have for almost everything. Potatoes and sweet potatoes will last a very long time. They're filling, they're versatile. They can be stored in cool, dark places, okay? And then carrots and cabbage. Now, uh, the carrots are questionable sometimes. I've had carrots go bad in like three days. However, I think that's, you know, the store's fault. Um, but cabbage will last forever. Oh my gosh. So um, hearty vegetables that last longer and add nutrients to meals like carrots and cabbage. Any of your uh, root vegetables take a serious look at and if you can keep them cool and if you can keep them dry then you'll be able to keep them for a good long time. Can you survive 30 days with no grocery store? Going through this list taking a look at what's in your pantry okay can you survive 30 days without a grocery store? By stocking up on some of these essential items you can ensure that you and your family are prepared for anything to weather any storm that happens, whether it's nature made or man-made, okay? Whether it's an unexpected emergency or just a precaution, having a stocked pantry gives you that peace of mind. I mean, literally, it's my happy place, you guys. I just sit in here and look around and go, whoo, that was a lot of work. 
and I got it. I got it. I do. You can survive some kind of, you know, disaster. You can survive some kind of thing that happens, whether it's job loss or medical or weather or whatever. Um, or, you know, and it's not just a matter of surviving, but because of this, you have the opportunity to thrive where a lot of people won't. So take care of you, do what you have to do to stock it up so that you can go 30 days without a grocery store. Can you do it? Throw it in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your experiences for 30 days without a grocery store. Remember in January, we do the January pantry challenge. It's so much fun. Yes, it is. If you want to look at 24 foods that are forever foods, check out this video right here. And until next time, be safe and stack it to the rafters.